Hi everyone. In this video, you're going to learn how to simplify radicals. So this is part one, where you're going to learn how to simplify square root radicals. Okay. So let's go over a couple of prereqs, right? So some prereqs. For prerequisites would be your perfect squares. So really you only need to know up to 10. So 10 squared, really is all you need to know. So let's just review them really quick. One squared is equal to one, two squared is equal to four, three squared is equal to nine, four squared is equal to 16, 5 squared is equal to 25, 6 squared is equal to 36, 7 squared is equal to 49, 8 squared is equal to 64, 9 squared is equal to 81, and finally, 10 squared is equal to 100. Okay, so these are the basic perfect squares you need to know, and then you need to know how to find factors. So prime factorization is basically shrinking, basically finding all prime factors. Of a number. So let's just take a really quick example. Say we had the number 72. I love the number 72, it's one of my favorite numbers. But let's start off by going by the definition of prime factorization, right? So we, our goal is to find all the prime factors. So what we're going to do is we're gonna think about what number 72 can be divided by, right? So looking at the number, there are two ways we can go. We know that seven plus two is equal to nine which means it's divisible by three and nine. And we know that since the number ends with a two, it is even, right? Oops. Okay, so since nine and three are the bigger numbers, I'd like to go by either nine or three, but I'm actually going to select three. Reason being is nine is not a prime number. So yeah, not prime. So since I want only prime numbers, I'm not going to use nine. I'm going to use three instead. So dividing 72 by three gives us two and 24, right? So now we're gonna look at 24. Well, I know that 24 is equal to two times 12. So I'm going to put that down here. Remember this piece over here, you do not need to put, I'm just putting it for the sake of viewing to make it easier for you to look at my thought process. So this is 12, right? Then I can think about the factors of 12. Well, I know that 12 is equal to two times six. So I'm going to put two and six. And I know that six is equal to two times three. So I'm gonna put two and three. So looking at my numbers down here, I know, and I can't see or use two or three into any more prime numbers, but two and three, right? So that's how I know I have finished my prime factorization. So let's go over how to write down a number's prime factorization. What you do is you put the number in, or the equal sign and equate it. So let's just go over briefly what we did, right? We took a number and we divided it by a prime factor. Then we took the um, quotient of the prime and we divided it by another prime number. So essentially how we need to write it is we're going to write it using multiplication. Since we have taken out multiple pieces or multiple numbers, we are trying to put it back together and show how all the prime factors come together. So let's look at how many prime number, how many of each prime numbers there are, right? 
So we know that there are one, two, three twos. So that means that two has been multiplied by itself three times. In other words, to write that in exponential form, it's two to the third power, right? So then let's go over how many threes there are. Well, I can see one, two threes. So I know that this is going to be three squared. So always make sure to write it in ascending order of for the basis, so the bases need to go from least to greatest. So this is how you do pound factorization. Okay, so let's go over the actual concept now of square roots, simplifying square roots, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you guys a quick example. Let's say I have the square root of 243. And I want to simplify this root, right? So if I want to simplify this root, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how many perfect squares there are, right? Because when you have such a radical, we can write a number through multiplication, right? So say you have a number two, you can rewrite that as two times one, or say you had a number six, write that as two times three. But when you're trying to simplify radicals, we get introduced to rewriting a number with squares. Now, why it's helpful is because when you look at a number, you want to see it in the simplest form possible. And it helps you add and subtract radicals. So that's gonna be a different video, but let's just try to simplify this. Let's see how many perfect squares are in 243. Now, simply looking at the number, I can tell that it's divisible by three because two plus four plus three is equal to nine. And we know that the divisibility rule of three is if if the numbers, if the digits of the number add up to a multiple of three, then it is divisible by three. So since the digits add up to a multiple, I'm going to abbreviate that as mult of three. 243 is divisible by 3. Okay, so now let's look at the prime factorization, right? Because in the previous example, we noticed how 2 times, how 72 equaled 2 to the third power times 3 to the second power, or 3 squared. It's going to help us find the number of squares, right? So let's Let's divide 243 by 3, since that was the first number we noticed it was divisible by. So 243 divided by 3, that's going to give us 81. Okay, well, now let's look at the second number. Well, looking at our per, um, perfect squares, we know that 81 is equal to 9 squared. So 9 squared would... 9 squared is equal to, let's rewrite 9 squared, right? We also know that 9 is equal to 3 squared. So we can essentially rewrite this as 3 squared to the power of 2. So using the exponent power rule, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it. So it's going to be 3 times 2 to the times 2, which will give us 3 to the 4th power. Right? So when we've found this, we already know that our prime factorization is going to have squares in it, right? Because what we need to notice is that four is an even power. And the square root of an even power is basically just dividing the power by two. So, what we're going to do is we don't really need to simplify anything more. 
we can rewrite this as e to the fourth power. So now what we can do is we can rewrite this radical in terms of pine factorization. So let's just rewrite 243 in pine factorization notation. So that's equal to three times three to the fourth since that's three to the first power using exponent multiplication rule, which states that if the bases are the same, then the exponent can just be added. We're going to get three to the power of one plus four, which is equal to three to the power of five. And since there are no other prime factors, we know that this is our final answer. We know that if, so let's rewrite this, we're gonna rewrite it as three to the fifth power. So we noticed here that when we have an even power, we, the square root is just going to divide the power. Now it's not just for even, it's going to work for odd powers also. But just like regular division, just like when you divide nine by two, you get a remainder. So you're, you get a remainder. You will get a remainder when finding the square root of an odd exponent. So what we're going to do is to make our lives much easier, we're going to separate the radical. Now, this is only possible. Let's make this very clear. It's only possible. when there is multiplication, or let me be more clear, only multiplication under the radical. Okay, so we can rewrite three to the fifth power as an even, in terms of even exponents. So what we can do is let's write, rewrite this in terms of squares. So three to the fifth is equal to three squared times three squared. Three squared times three, right? So let's rewrite that under this root. Three squared times three squared times three. We can separate these radicals because a radical, radical times, say if we have root A times root B, we can simplify and combine these as root AB under radical multiplication, right? So this is the basic idea of how we can separate these radicals. So let's just rewrite these as three squared times square root of three squared times square root of three. So we know that square root of three squared is just equal to three. Again, same thing. And now we just have root of three left. So what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply like terms. Since these are constant terms without radical, we're gonna multiply them together and get nine root three. This is our final answer. Okay, so well, this is it for the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Um, linked below is a worksheet. If you have any questions, if you want more practice, there are a couple of practice problems in the worksheet. Um, and the answer key will be with it. So thank you so much for watching and please come back and subscribe. Bye.